Many tourists know Athens and the Greek islands. That's a true Greece, right? How what if I told you there were equally beautiful gems to the north of the country, where influences of the Greek, the Byzantine and the Ottoman meet and form a unique experience very worthwhile? Amlex Universe and this is Thessaly and Macedonia. Hello Internet, welcome to Lex Universe. So I hope you enjoyed the previous few videos about Greece. Um, as you can see, I'm back home, but I'm bringing you one more video regarding this topic because I think there are some useful travel tips that I can share with you regarding Greece. Well, specifically northern Greece, but um, in fact many of them will be applicable for Greece in general. So in this video I want to share with you some useful travel tips about uh, Greece and I will focus mostly on Meteora, Thessaloniki and the Mount Olympus. But let's start with some basic facts. If you're interested in this, let's go! Right, so um, let's start with the basics. I mean, you all know where Greece is located, right? You can find it in the southeastern part of Europe, just across the Aegean Sea from Turkey. It's located on the southernmost tip of the Balkan Peninsula and the territory that we will talk about is in the northern part. The northern part of Greece is actually a little bit different from uh, what you may consider the proper Greece. I mean, whenever you want to travel for a holiday to Greece, you think of islands like Crete or um, Rhodes or Mykonos. The northern Greece is a little bit different, it's a lot more mountainous. Um, the climate there is uh, somewhat colder and the culture overall is strange, is a strange mix of Greek Roman architecture, the Ottoman architecture and the Byzantine and it's a little bit different from what you can see in the south of the country. Thessaloniki has its own international airport, I will talk about it a little bit more later but if you want to travel there overland, um, it's about six hours of train ride from Athens and you can also travel there from Istanbul, it's pretty much the same distance although you will have to cross the border of the Schengen area which is always a lengthy process so keep it in mind. So in general about Greece, uh, their currency is Euro, um, they speak Greek, uh, they also write Greek so if you want to travel to Greece, uh, it's a good idea to learn at least the letters from the Greek alphabet or have some app in your phone. I can recommend you Google Translator because of course you need me to tell you about Google, right? And um, it will be very helpful because while uh, many Greek people are attempting to speak English with you, uh, most of the signs in the cities and everywhere are actually written in Greek. From what I read, uh, if you want to drive in Greece, you should consider yourself to be the only sober person on the highway. Which, not, which is not very reassuring, is it? And I really hope that it's not true. But um, in general the traffic in Greece is kind of crazy. If you're for example in Athens, it's like a complete mess on the streets. I mean, it's really like the least European city in Europe, I would say. Anyway. So, if you don't want to drive, uh, there is some public transportation. I believe like the most uh, useful transportation between cities is the bus network. The largest Greek bus company is called uh, KTEL. Uh, they have bus connections to almost every larger town, even smaller ones, I guess. Um, they are kind of cheap. I mean, if you travel for a longer distance, it can get pricier. Uh, we went from Kalampaka, which is like a town near Meteora, to Thessaloniki and it costs like 25 euro. If it's expensive, if it's cheap, well, you need to consider it yourself. It really depends what you compare it to. Uh, but the buses are generally quite reliable. They usually go on time. Um, some of them have uh, like seat belts and uh, are like the Western-like sort. Some of them really aren't. <laughs> And really depends where you go to, but if you travel between the main 
uh, cities, let's say, and the larger cities, um, it will be okay. Um, your other option is, um, yeah, just consider that, just keep in mind that, for example, in uh, Thessaloniki, uh, the bus station is located really far away from the city center. I would say it's about five or six kilometers, so you will need to use the public transportation, to which I will get later, but uh, just keep in mind, it's a little bit further from the city, and if you want to travel there, you might consider allowing yourself a little bit more time. Um, your next possibility how to travel between cities is by train. Um, this was our first choice uh, when we wanted to go to Kalampaka. Um, see, the trains in Greece are... <laughs> yeah, I don't want to compare it to any uh, fourth world country, but uh, it's just really unpleasant. First, the railway stations are well, really creepy and really spooky and uh, just a place where you don't want to generally spend any time. And the trains themselves are a whole other category. You can see it right now on the screen. Uh, actually, like most of the trains of the train stations that we went through looked like this. So it's not something very pleasant. And even like the long distance trains, uh, in this case, probably the most modern train in Greece will be between Athens and uh, Thessaloniki. And imagine that you go by six hours in a train that barely has air conditioning and really from the outside looks like it's gonna break any time. <laughs> like it's gonna break any minute. <laughs> well, see it yourself. But on the bright side, uh, you can actually find timetables and uh, buy tickets online on their webpage trainosc.gr or you can download their app. There is no Uber or any other app of the same sort in Greece, so uh, you will always need to go by a regular taxi, so if that's something that you're not comfortable with, uh, I don't know, just hire a car. <laughs> uh, you know, you know what I mean. So one general tip about the Greece or traveling Greece is they have always a lot of time for anything. So don't expect uh, the trains to go on time. When when people say that uh, the Spanish always have a lot of time for everything and they everything is mañana mañana, well then in Greece is everything is abrio abrio. And now I will give you some uh, useful travel tips to certain destinations in uh, northern Greece, and I will start with the probably the main tourist attraction in everything that's above Athens, and that would be the Monasteries of Meteora. Yes, this is one of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, when you get there, you have a feeling that you're located in some fantasy world. It really doesn't feel real, but it's as real as I am. Okay, I do exist. If you want to go to Meteora, um, your points of origin will probably be either Athens or Thessaloniki. In both cases you can uh, get some day or multi-day organized tours that you can buy somewhere and get your guide or somewhere. Um, these are extremely overpriced, they will usually take you to one or two monasteries and especially if you choose the day trip. Um, honestly it's not that close and you will lose a lot of time just traveling between all these places. So. Um, I would recommend you to uh, go by public transportation or uh, by a rented car. Uh, you can get accommodated in the town of Kalanvaka, which is located directly under Meteora. Or you can find a hotel in the nearby Trikala, especially if you are there uh, during the high season. Uh, the town of Kalanvaka can be overpriced and quite overcrowded, so uh, you can stay in Trikala, especially if you have a car. You can take a bus, uh, there is the bus line from Kalampaka to Meteora. It travels several times a day, uh, the one trip costs uh, about 1 euro 60 and it has several stops uh, along the way and also then it stops at each of the monasteries. So you can uh, take the bus and visit basically every monastery in one go. 
uh, unfortunately not all the monasteries are open every day uh, ex with the exception of uh, Saint Nicholas uh, all of them have at least one uh, day that is closed uh, in most cases it's uh, either Friday, Saturday or Sunday uh, one of these so uh, better check in advance uh, and plan accordingly this is one of the reasons why people usually recommend to allow yourself at least two days for traveling in Meteora but if you're already in Kalambaka uh, it's really doable within one day if you choose the right one the entrance uh, to each of these uh, monasteries is 3 euro I will now give you kind of my, uh, my preferred uh, order how to visit these monasteries um, so if you will follow the route of the bus, then the first monastery that we will stumble upon is St. Nicholas. Then you will get all the way to the very top where you can find two monasteries at once. There is the largest one, Great Meteoron, and right next to it there is Varlam, which is probably the one most impressive, probably the one that you can see on most of the pictures from Meteoron. Uh, the Grand Meteoron is the largest complex of them all, and uh, you will probably spend there most time. Then uh, you will walk along this road, and you will get to the monastery of Rosano. Uh, that's, that's the first female monastery. Uh, it's very small. Uh, really, basically, even the largest of the monasteries uh, are not really that large, and you will not. You cannot imagine that you will like spend two hours in each monastery. That, it's, it's not really that big. And in the case of Rosana, we, there are like three rooms in the whole monastery that you can visit. So, well, it costs only three euros, so it's worth it in that way. But uh, on the other hand, you will not really spend that much time there. The next monastery that I would recommend you to visit is the Holy Trinity. This one is uh, very special because uh, getting there requires some uh, large climbing. You, know, you will have to get like 100 meters down and then I would say like 200 meters up again. So, um, well, if you have a wheelchair, you probably just sit this one out. Is that offensive? And the last monastery is the second largest actually, and the second female monastery, and that's the Saint Stephen. And this one actually, when the weather is nice, uh, will give you a great view of the city of Kalampaka and the rocks around it. Um, right, uh, one good point when you're on Metavara, when you're up there among the monasteries, there is no restaurant or something. You, there are some uh, uh, like kiosks where you can buy water or, or some souvenirs but uh, generally there's no uh, no place where you can uh, like go for something to eat so bring something with you if you are really really hungry um, one thing uh, between the monasteries of Rosano and um, Holy Trinity there is probably the main I would say observation point uh, People go to watch their sunsets and sunrises because it's like uh, in the great spot where you can see uh, the sunset on one side and rise on the other. And to me, it's my most favorite spot in in the, in in, in, in Metora. Again, if you go there, there is kind of a strict dress code, so uh, what I'm wearing right now would not be okay. And also, if you're a woman, uh, you need to be wearing pants. So if you intend to fly to Greece, one of the places that you will not be able to avoid in Northern Greece is the city of Thessaloniki. Uh, if you want to travel around the city, uh, there is uh, quite an extensive bus network. They're actually building metro, but it's not ready yet. But if you're watching this from the future, then probably there is metro, so I'll lock you. <laughs> Now, uh, the, bus, but the bus network is actually quite uh, good. You can get the app called Thessaloniki Travel. Uh, it's available also for Android and also for iOS. And you can find there um, not only all the stops, but also uh, the timetables, prices for the ticket, and uh, also some kind of a route planner where you can uh, add 
two points and it will find you the best connection which is really useful if you're there um, if you want to avoid buses which you will probably not be able if you want to use the airport because it's quite far away but if you want to avoid buses uh, they also have like these uh, rental lime uh, scooters um, <laughs> they're actually kind of funny it was my, for the first time that I rented a scooter Anyway, if you want to see more from Thessaloniki, go watch my two previous videos. I'll show there everything that you will need to see. So the last thing I want to talk about in Northern Greece is uh, the Mount Olympus. Um, I will be cheating on this one a little bit because I never got to go there, but I had the whole part planned, so I will at least share with you my experiences with that in case you want to climb this mountain. Um, <laughs> so the reason why I didn't go there it was because there was uh, Medicaid and Janos in Greece and it just fucked up the whole train network so I was never able to get even close to the mountain but if uh, that's what you want to do here are some tips first of all uh, your base of operation will be the town of Litokoro which is located uh, just between the mountain and uh, the shore so if you want to go up to the Olympus um, you can walk all the way up, but if that's something that you don't want to do, especially just consider that the railway station in Lidovoro is even further than the, than the town itself, so that's some other, I don't know, 5 kilometers or so. But if you want to go from Lidovoro, um, it, it's generally, probably it's doable within one day, but I wouldn't risk it if I were you. Um, there is a possibility to sleep near the summit of Olympus, there are actually several summits, but if you get to like 2000 meters above the sea level, you will get to the Spirios Agapitu uh, refuge where you can spend the night for a few euros. You will be in a room with several other travels there, it's okay, but uh, you need to book it in advance. Um, also, just book it a lot in advance. I mean, right now the travel industry is almost dead and I still wasn't able to get a place there so it's really popular which I didn't realize ever anyway uh, so you can get there you can spend the night and then in the morning you can head out to the summit and then just go down back to Little Horo. if you don't want to walk uh, all the way from Little Horo, uh, you can there is actually uh, a restaurant 1200 meters above the sea level Rivania uh, where you can get by car, so if you have a rent car, it's that much easier. If you don't, uh, there are actually taxi cabs that can take you up there for, uh, um, would say like 30 euro from from the from the town. So that's Northern Greece. I hope you found it interesting that you learned something that you didn't know. I mean, even if you were to Greece, you want to see something different. I would really recommend this. It's much less ancient Greek more like the Byzantine Greek and I think that's really interesting. Yeah, so um, once uh, this insane second wave of Covid is gone, then I would really recommend you to hop on a plane and go to Thessaloniki or go to Athens and then go by train up. Because um, it's in a really amazing place and I'm sure you won't regret it. So. That was Greece. We will visit some other places this year, I hope, and um, I hope you will stay in tune for that. And if you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell so that you know about my every upload. Check out my other social media and see you in the next video. Have a beautiful day.